Errors, uncertainty and limitations, their impact on data. So errors, uncertainty and limitations in data can significantly impact the quality and accuracy of data analysis. Essentially, these things can make data be wrong. And when we put wrong data into a system, we end up getting wrong information back out of the system, which will mean us doing the wrong things when it comes to decision making or planning our way forward as a part of our larger goal setting. These factors can introduce bias, distort insights, and lead to incorrect conclusions based on results if not properly addressed. So we should be having mechanisms in place through our data analysis strategies that hopefully minimize these errors and ensure that we do have quality data for our decision making. So let's break down what these three are. And the first one is that of errors. They're mistakes or inaccuracies in data collection, entry, or processing that lead to incorrect information. So it's actually wrong data in the system. So it could be we put it in wrong or the formulas we made in our programs lead to the data being miscalculated. So the errors can occur at multiple levels. Even if we're making customized software itself, if we code it wrong, well, it can have errors too and systems can crash. So we really want to avoid errors. They're bad. So errors can skew analysis, leading to misleading results. And for example, a typo in a data set where a person's age is recorded as 350 instead of 35, well, that's going to create massive problems because it's impossible to live that long. And think about it even from a financial aspect, okay? Let's say you want to transfer your friend uh, to their bank account, $100. And instead of putting two zeros, you put three zeros and you've just sent them a thousand dollars. Okay, so just one typo can lead to massive mistakes. So we've got to have things in place like validation and verification tools that confirm with us or flag when mistakes have been made in order to hopefully address when errors occur. The second category is that of uncertainty. Okay, variability or lack of confidence in data often due to incomplete or ambiguous information. So the data is there, but it's just not specific enough. Okay, so it's not actually, you know, giving us a full story. So it's hard to make an appropriate analysis on that data because of the issues going on. So uncertainty can make insights less reliable and difficult to interpret. We're kind of guessing, okay, as the name says, because you just can't get that confirmation out of the data. So for example, weather forecasts based on probability make the prediction of rain, okay, will have a degree of uncertainty with it, okay? It's funny because most of the supercomputers in the world, okay, the ones where a lot of research and development go into, the highly expensive ones, they're trying to predict the weather because when the weather changes and when severe circumstances come, that can lead to massive outages and massive issues. Okay, and also for businesses too, it can give them opportunities to provide resources when no systems go down. But that's a whole nother layer that I won't go down that tangent there. But that's uncertainty. We just can't be certain that the data we're getting from the system will be accurate. Okay, there's just not enough there. The final category is that of limitations, which are constraints in data, such as small sample sizes, outdated information, or limited data scope. All right, so in this case, okay, the data just has boundaries on them and it, it makes it tougher to solve our problems. So limitations can reduce the usage of findings, restrict the depth of analysis as well. All right, because the data doesn't cover everything. Okay, so we might have data related to a specific operation, but that data might not cover those operations across all regions or, or areas or all demographics. So a survey conducted only among urban populations that excludes rural perspectives, okay, it will limit the amount of relevant findings we will get. And that's why we always, when we go and do data collection, we do try to cover all regions, all categories, all demographics, okay, because if we do only focus on one area and whether we do it purposefully or not purposefully, that does make biased data, okay? Because it's not a true reflection of an entire system, okay? Or an entire uh, field where data should be extracted from. So we want to minimize bias and ensure we do target multiple areas with our data collection so we can minimize this limitation aspect and then minimize the constraints on our data, hopefully getting data that is representative of the entire populace that we're trying to get data from and make decisions for. So I hope this video is giving you an introduction to these three classifications of issues with data. That of errors, which are the actual mistakes or inaccuracies in data, which can come in a variety of forms and sources. 
uncertainty when we get do have data but within that data there's just not enough there to make a confident decision or what we're trying to make a decision about just has so many variables that it makes it very hard to make a decision that's going to be 100 correct and then finally limitations when our data collection isn't wide enough in scope okay or may contain small sample sizes and through being that we're missing out on the full picture it does not show the full picture and will not support our decision making in relation to the full picture because the data we have is limited so what we're going to do there'll be a part two to this video that goes into areas that can support and work against this but for now i hope this is giving you an understanding of areas uncertainty and limitations